good evening dear students and welcome to byju's exam prep so our today's session is basically a practice session in which we will discuss the question which is related to the basic concept of structure analysis so kindly join the session as quick as possible guys because we have almost 15 questions and if you solve these questions you are able to understand the fundamental concepts which is required in the structure part right some of the questions are related to the MDM part, some of the questions are related to ILD also and some of the questions are related to our support conditions which we have discussed in our ground zero series already, right? So let's start this particular session guys and please share this session to other students also so that they can join the session also, right? So those students who are watching this video as a first time, let me tell you about myself. My name is Krishna Yadav and I'm teaching from last 10 year and I mentored almost 22,000 students for these examination like gate and ESC examination and uh, my area of expertise is environment structure RCC and mechanics part so guys let's start the session okay quickly so this is the first question in front of you what is this question exactly we need to find out the static indigenacy of this particular figure right what is this this is basically rigid jointed structure and we know that we have different support condition over here like fixed support is there so in fixed support, how many reactions was there, which we have discussed in our ground zero series already? Three, right? So let's solve this particular problem, guys. How we can get the correct answer for this problem? Let's understand. So how many reaction is present at this particular support? Three reaction. At this support, again three reaction. At this support, again three reaction. So total number of RE is equal to how much? The total number of RE is equal to nine. Okay. So how you can calculate the value of DSE? It is basically RE minus 3. That is the formula to calculate the DSE value, right? So RE is equal to how much? It is equal to 9. 9 minus 3 is equal to how much? It should be equal to 6. Now, how we can calculate the value of internal static indigenacy? That means the value of DSI. So you know that guys, there is one formula which is basically the closed loop condition. So 3C minus RR. How many closed loop we have? Let's count it. 1, 2, 3 and 4. So total number of closed loop is 4. So 3 into 4. How many reaction are released? 0. So ultimately it will become 12. So if you add both the values, you are able to get the value of ds exactly. Right? Add both the values. 6 plus 12 is equal to how much? It should be equal to 18. So the correct answer is 18 for this particular problem i hope all of you are able to understand this please write down guys all of you are getting the same answer or not please write down in the chat box okay so let's move to the next question guys let's move to the next question now this is another problem you need to understand by having some load at the support due to that reason the movement can be developed on other support or not that you need to tell me, right? So let's read the question once again, what it is exactly. In the probed cantilever AB of length L is subjected to a point load, right? This is basically a probed cantilever B in which a point load is there, which is exactly placed at support A. Now you need to tell me what should be the bending moment which is present at support B. So tell me guys, if you apply any kind of load exactly at the support, you may have a reaction which is equal to P at the support itself, right? So this value will be equal to how much? It should be equal to P. If it is equal to P, then what will be the moment over here? It should be equal to zero. So the correct answer for this particular problem is C. C is the correct answer for this particular question, okay? Let's move to the next question, guys. Let's move to the next question. Now, this is a cantilever beam which is given to us. Now, we need to find out what should be the bending moment at the far end. So, guys, we need to find out the carryover moment at end B. At this particular end, you need to find out the carryover moment. That means the value of MB. MB is equal to how much? Right, MB is equal to how much? Now tell me guys, right now this is a cantilever beam. If you apply a moment like this, then can I say that summation of moment is valid at support B itself, right? 
So let's take that particular condition. We'll write down summation moment at B is equal to how much? It is equal to 0. So if it is equal to 0, M plus MB is equal to how much? It is equal to 0. So the value of MB is equal to how much? The value of MB is equal to minus of M, right? That means the correct answer for this problem will be what? B. B is the correct answer. All of you are getting it or not guys, please write down in the chat box. Tell me guys. Okay. So B is the correct answer for this particular problem. Let's move to the next question guys. The live load with time can vary in what? It can vary in magnitude, it can vary in the position, neither position nor magnitude, position as well as magnitude. Now the question is, sir, what is the difference between the dead load and the live load? You know that guys, in case of dead load, the load value is not moving anywhere. That means it is not trying to change its value, right? That means it is fixed. Second thing, the location of the dead load is also fixed, right? That means if it is placed at a particular location, it will remain there, right? Until or unless we are not trying to move it. But usually guys, if you try to move it, then it will become live, right? So that's why it is known as dead load. So the location and the value will remain same. It will not change. But in case of live load, both the things are trying to change. That means the position and the magnitude, both the thing will get changed. Let me tell you one very simple example for this. Let us suppose this is a UDL. whose intensity is 10 kilo Newton per meter. Just imagine. Okay. And let us consider guys, this is our simply supported beam. Now, let us suppose the length of this UDL is 5 meter and the length of this particular span is 20 meter. Now tell me guys, if I shift this particular load in this particular direction, what will happen? The amount of load which is present on this particular beam will get changed continuously. That means the magnitude is trying to change. Second thing, position is also changing, right? So that's why the correct answer is what? The correct answer is D. Position as well as magnitude will change. Clear? Next question, guys. Next question. How many compatibility equations should be written if we have n number of redundant reaction. So what is redundant reaction? It is nothing as the total number of unknown which is present in a structure. If you have n number of redundant reaction, then how many extra equation are required to solve such type of structure? That is nothing as that is equal to number of compatibility equation itself. So guys, if the n number of redundant reactions are there, so you need n number of compatibility equation to solve the problem. Let me give you one very simple example. If you have an equation like x plus y is equal to 20 and 2x plus y is equal to 30. So there are two variable and two equation. Then only we can solve the problem or then only we will get the value of x and y completely. In the same manner, if you have n number of variables, that means our redundant reaction, you need n number of compatibility equation in that case. That's why the correct answer should be B. B is the correct answer for this particular problem right let's move to the next one if a truss sorry if a member of a truss is in compression then what will be the direction of force that it will apply to the joints so let us consider this is our member and these are the joints okay now you know that guys right now in this particular truss member the compression force is there so if it is compression then how it look like like this right and in case of member it will be like this so tell me guys on the joint what should be our direction of arrow it is inward or outward it is inward so that particular arrow is trying to compress the joint that's why it is known as inward condition not outward condition right so if arrow is inward or towards to the joint then it is known as compression condition that's why b is the correct answer for the problem okay let's move to the next question guys in a deflection diagram which of the following 
can have zero angular deflection. So let us suppose we have various support condition like pin support, roller support, fix support, hinge support. So you know that guys, if you have hinge support or roller support, you may find some angular deformation will be there definitely, right? If you apply any kind of load, no doubt will have angular deformation. Why it is so? Because these support are not capable to resist the movement or to resist the angular deformation. That's why these two options can be wrong and this one is also wrong, right? But if we talk about the fixed support, at the fixed support, we know that the value of theta will become zero, right? Why it is zero? Because the movement is there or the reaction of movement will be there at the support itself. And due to that reason, we'll have theta is equal to zero, right? That's why the correct answer should be C. C is the correct answer for this particular problem. Let's move to the next question, which is basically MSQ type question. What is this question exactly? You need to identify the correct statement of the following. So basically, there are four statements which is given to us. Let's read it once. So two degree of freedom are available at each joint of a pin jointed plane frame. You know that guys, if we have a 2D truss, so at each and every joint, there are two degree of freedom. That means it can move in two direction. One is delta X and second one is delta Y, right? So there are two possibility of this particular joint in these two direction it can move. So delta X and delta Y is possible. So the first statement is correct. Second statement says six degree of freedom are available at each joint of the pin jointed space frame. Pin jointed space frame. You know that guys pin jointed space frame is nothing as our 3D truss. So for 3D truss condition only three degree of freedom is there delta X delta y and delta z right delta x delta y and delta z so only three degree of freedom will be there in this particular joint so that's why this statement is wrong next one is four degree of freedom are available at each joint of rigid jointed plane frame so guys for rigid jointed plane frame we have three joint displacement delta x delta y and theta z delta x delta y and theta z so three joint displacement is there good evening rahul next statement is what kindly give the answer if you know what is the concept behind the question please write down your answer whatever option you may find suitable for the question okay so the four degree of freedom are available at each joint of the rigid jointed plane frame this particular statement is again wrong the next one is three degree of freedom are available at each joint of pin jointed space frame yes definitely we have already discussed that's why a and d are the correct answer and that's why this is a msq type of problem clear clear to all of you okay guys perfect let's move to the next question now, in this particular problem, we need to tell, tell what should be the value of kinematic in C. What is the value of dk? So, what is the formula for dk in case of 2D truss? That is 2j minus re. Now, how many joint we have? That we have to count first. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 so total number of joint is 8 so 2 into 8 minus how many reaction we have 1 2 3 and 4 so 4 reactions are there so ultimately the value will be equal to how much it should be 12 so the 12 joint displacement can be possible in this particular 2d truss that's why the correct answer should be c c is the correct answer crystal clear Next question guys, we need to calculate the distribution factor for member OA. So right now you are able to see this particular member. For this particular member, we need to find out the value of distribution factor, right? So first of all, we need to calculate what is the value of stiffness 
for each and every member which is present at joint O. So what is the value of KOA? That is equal to EI by L. When the far end is guided ruler, the stiffness will be EI by L. If the far end is ruler like this, then it is to be 3 EI by L. So for OD, it should be 3 EI by L. Now, let us suppose KOC also. So the far end is fixed. So the value will be 4 EI by L. But for OB, let us consider this is B. So for OB, this is our roller. But the roller reaction is nothing as axial force for this particular member. And that's why it is not capable to resist the or to take part into the shear force and to take part into the bending moment. And that's why guys, this end is to be considered as a free end. And due to that reason, the value of KOB should be equal to how much? It should be equal to zero. Please remember this. If the axial force or if the vertical reaction of roller support will become an axial force for the member, then you have to consider the stiffness for that particular member as zero because this end will become free, right? Now guys, let's calculate the distribution factor for OA, how much it is KOA upon summation K. So KOA is equal to how much? EI by L divide by summation k that means addition of all these values 1 3 4 that means 8 8 ei by l if you solve this you will get 1 by 8 as an answer that means a is the correct answer for the problem clear a is the correct answer for the problem next question guys again we need to find out the distribution factor for this particular question you need to calculate the distribution factor for member AD as shown in the figure. What is AD member? This is our AD member. We need to calculate the distribution factor for AD member only. So first, what we have to do, we need to write down the stiffness for AD member. And how much it is? 4 EI by L. L is equal to how much? 2.5 meter, which is already given to us. Next one is KAB. KAB is equal to how much? Again, 4E into 2I divided by distance. Distance is 5 meter. If you solve it, you will get 2.5 at the base again. So kindly see this stiffness and this stiffness, it is similar, right? If it is similar, so can I say that the distribution factor for AD part is nothing as KAD divided by summation K. That means 4EI by 2.5 divide by addition of these two value that means 8 e i by 2.5 if you solve it you will get 1 by 2 as an answer that means b is the correct option for the problem clear b is the correct answer for the problem next question if you use a link in a structural system then how many unknowns would be there so guys what is link link is nothing as it is a member which have capacity to bear the axial force only. That means it is connected to two hinges and this member can bear only the axial force. Whether it is compression or tension, it doesn't matter. So only one unknown is there, which is present due to the link condition. And that's why guys, the correct answer should be B. B is the correct answer for the problem. Clear? Okay. Now guys, this particular point we have already discussed in our uh, ground zero series. A surface structure is what? You have already, uh, means you already have wa watched the, those videos which we have posted. So in that particular video, we have already discussed what are the various type of structure we have, right? Skeleton structure, surface structure, right? Solid structure. So what is surface structure? Surface structure are those structure in which two dimension are very large, but other dimension or the, you can say that the third dimension is very small that means the thickness of the member is very small and that's why it is known as surface structure so that's why guys the answer should be what a is the correct answer for the problem if a structure is having very small thickness kindly consider it as a surface structure now the last two question are based upon the ild part now let's understand how we can do it okay so point a is fixed Point A is fixed support and B and D are internal hinges and C and E are pin roller. Okay. 
A, B, B, C, C, D and D are 1 meter. So this is 1 meter, this is 1 meter, this one is 1 meter and this one is also 1 meter. Now as per the question, what will be the maximum point of ILD of vertical reaction at point C? So guys, if you draw the ILD for vertical reaction at C, right, by releasing it and giving unit force or unit displacement basically, so the deflected shape of the structure will be like this. You need to find out the maximum ordinate, which is very simple. So tell me guys, in the direction of this VC itself, you may have ordinate 1, right? But in the direction of joint D, what should be the ordinate? For 1, it is 1. For 2 meter distance, what should be the ordinate? It is 2, right? For 2 meter distance, it should be 2. Ashok says, sir, A. No, guys, it should be B. B is the correct answer for this problem. Right? Last question. Point A is fixed. Again, the same condition is given. Just we need to find out what will be the area of ILD curve if we make it for vertical reaction at E. So, guys, this is a ruler. If you release the vertical reaction at E, that means V is equal to how much? It should be 1. So, the deflected shape of the structure should be like this. You just need to estimate what should be the area for this. So, what is this ordinate? 1. What is resistance? 1. So, kindly calculate the area for this. So, we can write here half into 1 into 1. And how much it is? It is equal to 0.5. So, the correct answer is B. B is the correct answer for this particular question. Now, guys, in a very short duration, we have solved 15 questions, which is related to the basic concept part. Right? So, I hope you have enjoyed the session today. Yes, Ashok, B is the correct answer. So I hope all of you have enjoyed the session today. If you have any doubt, any query, you can post in the comment box, guys. We will discuss it, okay? But there is one, one, one more information which I want to add over here. We have a free workshop in which a detailed one-year preparation strategy is to be discussed for GAY 2024, which you can join on 26th of March at 12.30 p.m. on our app. So kindly join it so that you can have the information for this also, right? Okay? Thank you, Ashok. Thank you so much. So, guys, that's it. Right? And let's close the session and let's meet in the next one in which we will discuss the questions part and the concept part also. Okay? Bye-bye, guys. Take care and thank you so much.